Hi, and welcome to the channel. Just got back from my fall photography workshop that was in Leavenworth, Washington. And then after four days or so there, we went down to Silver Falls State Park outside of Salem, Oregon to shoot waterfalls in the fall color. The weather was perfect. The fall color was great. And I got some amazing photos, as did all the participants. They all had a really, really good time. And stick around because at the end of the video, I'll show you some of the photos that I came away with at the workshop. I'm getting ready to head to France for two weeks. I'll be in Paris and then heading down to Marseille. I'll be doing a lot of photography on the way and I thought this would be a great video to tell you some of my tips for traveling with your camera gear because the last thing you want is to have your gear under the belly of the plane or have to check it as baggage. You want to keep it with you all the time. When I travel with my gear and I'm doing photography, I have two camera bodies, three lenses, memory cards, extra batteries, chargers, vlogging equipment, a laptop computer. It's a lot and it's a lot of money to have floating around and the last thing you want is to have that, that gear out of your sight or in a baggage compartment or have to check it. That's just not something that, that should ever happen. There are some things you can do to mitigate that risk to make it just a non-issue so you don't have to stress about it. So when I'm doing landscape photography here in the Pacific Northwest out of my house or if I can drive uh, within distance, uh, a lot of times I'm gonna use, if it's a longer hike or one in the weather, I'll probably use something of this size. This is my Shimoda bag. Uh, it's, it's a great bag, it's pretty dirty, I use it a lot, but it's got a lot of space in it. It's got um, a lot of pockets, but it's really, really tall. You can see that this is, this is pretty tall. I would not recommend anything of this size trying to get it onto an airplane. You could run into issues. So the one that I'm gonna, I, that I plan on taking, this is my second favorite bag, and this is a Mind Shift, and it is a backlight. This is 26 liters. You can see the size difference in the two. It's huge. So I'm going to leave this one at home. And that means that I've got to pack everything into this because this allows me to fit it in the overhead, no problem. Or worst case scenario, and I've done this before, is it'll fit under the seat. And the way to do that is you don't want to add a tripod to this. Normally, I would put the tripod here, but like I said, I don't want that on the airplane. And not to mention that if you have a tripod that's got spike feet on it, you could run into issues with TSA or even <clears throat> agents in another airport. It's, you know, you just don't even want to have to go there, right? So I don't uh, uh, put a tripod on the bag ever. When I travel in an airplane, I'm gonna take my tripod and I'm gonna put it in my checked baggage that goes under the plane. A quick tip when you're traveling by plane with your camera gear is make sure that you don't put any of your batteries in your checked bags. That's a big no-no. All of your lithium batteries for your cameras, for your uh, video cameras, or for whatever you might have that <laughs> requires batteries, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got that in your bag, in your carry-on, and that'll go through security. That also includes chargers. If you've got a battery bank that you might use to charge your phone or charge your tablet, uh, in a case of an emergency where there's no electrical outlets, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you've got that with your carry-on and not in your checked bag. Another tip when you're traveling on an airplane and you wanna make sure you keep your gear with you is make sure that you're not the very, very last to board. If you've got a camera bag that's, that won't slide underneath an airline seat, like, I, like I've traveled with this for years, I know for a fact, it won't give me any, any leg room, I will have zero, but I know for a fact that this bag is gonna fit under my seat and I'm not gonna have to, to check it. But if you have a larger bag or you're worried that you'd rather, you wanna have your leg room and you're worried that they're gonna run out of overhead storage then you definitely, definitely, definitely gonna to wanna to make sure you're not in that last boarding group when you get on the plane so that you can 
be sure that you've got a spot overhead. So that means when you're booking your ticket, you might want to upgrade enough so that you're not in the very, very last group to board or the last two sections to board to make sure you've got a spot in those overheads. And I will say this, there are some planes, I've, tr I've traveled to some locations where the airplanes are these smaller prop planes or very small jets that pretty much the overhead is tiny and there's no under the seat room. If you get in one of those situations where your plane is gonna be that small, you've got some choices to make. And again, that's why I highly, highly recommend you take a smaller bag and keep your tripod into your checked luggage just to be safe. Now, depending on what you feel like you need to bring, you might be able to get away with something even smaller. Now, this bag I'm gonna take with me, it's gonna be in my checked luggage. This is a small Peak Design sling bag. This is really a, a very cool bag because it allows me to do it several ways. I can wear it as a sling, like across my back, kind of carry it like that if I would like. Or um, it'll even go around your waist and you can carry it uh, as a waist pack, either here or in the back or in the front like that. It is not huge, but for a day out doing photography, it has a good amount of space in there. We've got enough room in here to easily fit a camera with a lens on it and an extra lens. And then there is a design, little pocket in here with a zipper. You could throw a couple extra batteries, a memory card in it. And then you could also just lay in a, uh, a microfiber cloth as well into the top. And you're pretty much good to go for the day. And that's not bad. And it's super small, it's pretty lightweight. You could also throw this outside zipper pouch here. Um, would allow this would allow you to throw in maybe a few filters if you wanted to carry some filters. Also has straps here on the bottom, and this would allow you to put your tripod. So you can sling your tripod underneath here, so you don't have to carry it. So I'd snug this up, and this would allow you to carry the tripod with your bag. So you might be asking, why not just take this instead of the, the mind shift? And that's because the mind shift is gonna have all my cables, all my chargers, my vlogging gear, my DJI Pocket 3 that I just got that I'll be using for really the first time uh, on a video. It's, it's absolutely a heads and tails. I can already tell small amount of testing since I got it a few days ago. It's gonna be amazing. It is a superior product to the Pocket 2 in every way. And you guys know, if you've watched my channel at any length of time, I'm not a big fan of carrying a, an additional giant tripod and setting up an additional camera to shoot my vlogs for my YouTube channel. Simply, it's, I'm not trying to be Cecil B. DeMille's or Stanley Kubrick or anything like that. I just want to get some information and have good quality. And I think that the DJI Pocket 3 or the Pocket 2 that I was using or the Pocket 1 when I started with that, is absolutely fantastic for the, the, the form factor, the size and the convenience and the speed. It's the way to go and that's what I'm gonna use. I'm excited to get that out and use that in France. One thing that I wanna remind everybody to do that I almost forgot to do and that is check your camera bags for anything that might be illegal to go through security. And that includes things like uh, if you've got an all, I usually carry when I'm out hiking in the wilderness, I'll carry an all-in-one like knife, screwdriver, you know, like a Swiss army knife type thing that's got pliers, it's got a blade in it. So I've got, I carry that little multi-tool in my backpack and that is a definite no-no when you get to security. So make sure you check your bag 100%, every pocket, every crevice, every zipper to make sure that you don't have anything that you're not supposed to take on board a plane or try to get through security or you'll be sad because you might get questioned and you're probably going to have to throw it away. One last thing when you're traveling overseas to a different country is to make sure that you bring some type of electrical adapter or you're going to have to pick one up once you get there. There are the universal ones like this one here that basically has all the different type of plugs on the back. You can just plug it in to whatever outlet and then you can plug in your laptop or your chargers or whatever. Don't worry about trying to convert the electricity because your 
all of your chargers for your phone, for your laptop, for your camera batteries are all going to be multi-voltage. You can always look on the back just to double check, but you should be absolutely fine. You just need something that's going to match up so that you can plug your standard American plug into to get it to get it to charge. So don't forget one of these. Before I show you my photographs that I captured from the workshop in Leavenworth and Silver Falls, I wanted to just take a quick second and plug my workshops coming up for next year. If you go to my website, www.jamesparkerphoto.com, you can see a list of all of them. My three big ones, my big international trips, is Cherry Blossoms in Japan, which is the end of March, 1st of April. And my second trip is going to be Iceland. It's going to be in August summertime, Puffin's golden hour that lasts forever. And then my last international workshop is in September, into September, into October, and that is in Italy. And we're going to cover a lot of Italy. That one's a big one. That's two weeks. Southern Italy as well as Tuscany. If you'd like to get more information, check those out. It's on my website. I also have on my calendar a lot of local one or two day workshops and if you live in the Pacific Northwest anywhere within California, Idaho, Oregon, Washington or would like to come up for one of those everything from frozen waterfalls to Milky Way photography to out in the desert we're going to do Smith Rock, we're going to do painted hills out in the John Day fossil beds out in uh, central Oregon we'll be doing that as well if any of those tickle your fancy, make sure you check them out and let me know. Just if you have any questions, just drop me an email. If you stuck around this long, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I won't have a video for the next few weeks because I'm going to be in France. I will be editing and I have my laptop and doing stuff. So watch me on Facebook. I don't use Instagram, not a fan, but if you follow me on Facebook, you can just look me up, James Parker Photography on Facebook. You should be able to find me, no problem. Or you can follow the link from my website. And last, I'll leave you with some of my favorite photographs that I captured in this last workshop from Leavenworth, Washington in Silver Falls State Park. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.